I'm a game designer. I've done both LARPs and Freeform Games. And this lecture will be about both the ter terminology around these two things, because sometimes there's so many different names, so many different things we talk about. So I want to sort out a bit where these terms comes from and how we can use them and so on. And then I'm going to talk about strategies, how these two forms can enforce each other and make better stories for more all, us all. And I should also say I have a very Scandinavian perspective. I will talk mainly from experience in Denmark, Sweden and Norway. So I might be missing something, but this is from where they come. And then you can argue against me afterwards. Some of the words that are for LARP and freeform and stuff between them that after this lecture you will feel you know everything about. And for those who don't see, we have LARP, freeform, tape LARP, jeep form, role playing, meta, in the game, semi LARP, mini LARP. Yeah, there's a bunch of different. So this is what I'm going to try to sort some order in for you. First, terminology. I see it as a line, a big line, since we have a big screen. And we have on one side, we have tabletop role playing. On the other side, we have LARP. And this is how I define them. Uh, tabletop, usually table or something you sit around. LARP, more 360 degree, you go out in the forest or in an environment. Tabletop is imaginative, you see it in your mind. And LARP is physical, a table is a table. Game master, no game master. You tell the story in tabletop while you act it out in LARP. And both are sandbox, usually. That means there is a whole world and you can do a bit what you want. So, in the middle, I place freeform between these two as a kind of mixture, a middle child. And um, this is how I say we have a classroom or another type of room. It's usually a classroom, but it could be any room. It's imaginative. We see what happens in our heads. We have a game master, but we act it out usually on the floor. And it's a linear story as opposed to the other ones with sandbox. I will get back to that. So, the origin of this. Dungeons and Dragons. Everything begins with Dungeons and Dragons. 1974. <laughs> uh, of course, role-playing game big comes out, hit the world and the Nordic countries as well. And um, it becomes massively popular here. So, it starts to pop up conventions here. And two of the oldest one, one of the oldest one is actually here in Gothenburg. That's from 1977. And then the Danes come in 86 with Festival, and Gotcon is the one that is here in Gothenburg. And during these conventions, you can come and play Dungeons and Dragons and these games. And people write adventures to them. And then when you, su when you submit an adventure to one of those conventions, you get to fill in which system your your um, adventure is supposed to be in. Is it supposed to be in Dungeons and Dragon, in Vampire, in White Wolf, or whatever? What kind of system is this in? And then when you start writing adventure that didn't belong to an established system, they were freeform or systemless, as they were called in Denmark for a while. I translated this directly from Dan da Danish, or rulesless. So they were like just free. <laughs> um, and then some game designers in Sweden around 2000, they were tired of being defined as the other things, you know, if you don't, you're like systemless. So they invented their own system. And that's where Jeep form comes in, which you might have heard of. Uh, Jeep form is really free form. They have a one of the main reasons we started it was that it was Google, but it was, you could Google it, you could define it. Free form is impossible to Google. And you can define it. And you can say, so it's basically the same as I define as freeform. It's usually, it's very, it's usually have a very tight story. And that's one of the, ma the, the main points. And usually have a purpose with the game. Um, so that's where that comes from. And then on these conventions, they began to have competitions. Um, and here, the, the Swedes and the Danes, they're different. In Sweden, teams competed in how well you could could beat the adventure. Like, did you find the dragon, or did you slay him, or what did you do? In Denmark, they made a prize for writers instead of scenarios. 
And this is actually interesting because it resulted in that in 2003 the scene in Sweden just died, while in Denmark it's flourish and they have like, I don't know, 50, 60 submissions every year of new freeformer writers. But here somewhere I come in history. So I started going to convention um, and my whole knowledge about Gothenburg is still based on being here on this convention. Um, and I figure out this simple truth. This was what I discovered, that it's more magic in a classroom four hours than for four days in a forest. I had been forest LARPing for quite a while then. So this knowledge I brought with me and Later, in 2007, I made a LARP called A Nice Evening with the Family, which was a LARP, maybe, or was it a freeform? We don't know. Um, it's predefined stories from seven plays, and it's which means the stories were predefined, they all had a game master, and so on. And we can discuss is it the LARP, or maybe the seven parallel stories going on. And here we start to introduce a lot of free frame forming techniques into LARPing. We had the meta hour, we had a black box where you did free forming scene basically. You could do what happens to my characters before or what happens to them later. And this came to be known as meta techniques. So when you hear about meta now, this is from where it kind of came. Of course people have used techniques before, I'm not but we started we we had and the meta hour was really an idea for us to sort out that we didn't want a sitting dinner for a long time. We wanted to interrupt because we all thought it was so sucky just sitting down at dinner. But then that was kind of became left after this LARP. So that's now Freeform begins to sneak into LARP and it's and also I recruited one of the main Jeeps for this to make it Jeepish. And it continued. We did a convention in 2008 that was called Höjdpunkt, which means like highlight. And it's shown out tell and there was an opening freeform games. So here we begin to infest the LARPers with freeform. And the Swedish convention called Prolog came along, which had lots of black boxes. And this coined the term tape LARP and black box LARP. Because all of these LARPers went into these black boxes and what do we do? Let's put tape on the floor to make rooms. It was very dog wheel inspired. So here we have the term tape LARP. Again, this is very Scandinavian. You might have it different. So, and it sneaks into the Nordic scene as well. You have, if you wondered why you had opening games in 2009 and 2010, it's, it's because of this. Uh, and in Norway it was Tor Kjetil Edland and Trinele Selindal who had been to this both a nice evening and Hedpunkt who brought it along. And in Knutpunkt, of course, I wanted to honor Fastaval and the Danish scenario tradition, so we brought in a Danish game. And I'm thinking also that good Swedish tradition, they will start with a game tomorrow. Uh, and also the Norwegians continue this tradition with using them, using different type of meta techniques in Mad About the Boy and Just a Little Loving. And I will come back to just a little love because of this. So, okay, so back to this terminology. And um, now I will look at this little thing here. Why this linear story that actually pops out from the rest. And I think this is what I liked with Freeform as well, that it's so defined. When you do a forest LARP, you can go around and look for orcs forever and it might come and it might be awesome and you'll be chased and it's awesome or it's not because it you're cold and wet. So, <laughs> so as the engineer I am, I take my line and make a circle and even a line like we have the linear story, predefined story and sandbox co-creation down here. Now I'm into the like strategy tools, how you can use this knowledge you have to make better LARPs. And I even put some LARPs here while a LARP like a nice evening is very much we have a very linear story, like read the play, watch the movie, you know how the LARPs end. While a game as Carpo, which very much more co-creation, you come in and you get to do like whatever, or a classic fantasy LARP. And just a little loving is somewhere here in the middle, I would say. Ah, no, this is, hang on, I'm gonna, uh, so, so, and why do I kind of like that? Because 
as they say here, th they had to balance both the um, yeah, they had to balance both the what you want to do is you want to balance the linear story and you want to because co-creation has its advantages as well since co-creation gives you uh, it gives the players invests and therefore you get a good thing as well so how do you balance this and here is a quote then from uh, Torsettil and Hanna in this excellent book from last year's Knutpunkt where you also can read the longer version of this speech or some of it at least so but how do we maintain the vision of the game when the players are free to create narratives? We don't want this pe person running around in the forest looking for orcs. So, and here they say much of the solutions lies in the meta techniques. How the focus created and executed these techniques. And I think here is kind of the key how you use the freeform techniques within a LARP. And here is the canon also from this book. I stole a lot from you guys. Uh, Hands-on steering wheel on narrative and participatory create creativity gives stronger immersion, which means that you get to yeah you if you I if you figure out your story yourself you invest more, and that's so. What the future I see the challenge of balance will be our biggest challenge here. How can we make LARP that are tight, that has a narrative, that are good, but we're still co-creation and we're still, we're still like doing it good. I will also see, I will also mm, do some fortune telling here that we will start calling what we do in the games because when we start hitting other scenes, I have, I've been hanging out a lot with computer games designer and suddenly I was see hearing myself saying, well, I designed indie role-playing games and it sounds really cool. So I think that <laughs> will <laughs> continue. <laughs> and I will also think that um, we will do more freeforming games as we grow older and as times grow shorter. Thank you very much.